One. Hi, welcome to another Word of Tor with Rod Bryant and Moshe Avrams. He is looking so, so smart <laughs> and intelligent and handsome, and we're looking forward to learning Tor together. Shama. You are in Eretz Israel. <laughs> Lovely to be in the land. Thousands of people are coming to the Holy Land. You would think they would be running away from the Holy Land, but thousands of people are wanting to come see the miracles that are taking place in the land right now. And Baruch Hashem, I feel so happy to be able to talk to you today while you're in the land and I'm here in the great state of Texas, the second Israel of the world. So <laughs> we're going to get right in. We're in the next series or next episode, which I think is around six. We're going to quit counting because we don't want to bore you with the statistics, but we have a great class. We're in the first chapter still, and we're right around the 20th verse. And so let's begin to open up the text. Remen remem remember, guys, if you want to get a hold of Moshe Avrams, you can write him Moshe R. Avrams at gmail.com, or you can send us an email at nativecenter at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, make sure you send all the hard ones to Moshe, all the easy, fluffy ones to me, or the praise and adoration to me. I would appreciate that. <laughs> so let's get right into the text. Uh, Moshe, I, uh, I, I'm i eager to get started. So here we go. Absolutely. So, You know, it's funny, it's funny, like, doing this class from Israel, like you say, one of the cool things is when you get into the story and you start talking about the, the, the story of Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob, but all the time you mention places that, that are still in Israel and still have those names. And right down and, the road. Know, and right Yeah, that's it. Like sometimes the students are like, oh, you know, is that place still there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there the other day. There's a mall there now. <laughs> you know, it's the funniest thing. Think about this. these beautiful places. Abraham spent most of his time in Gaza, what is now called right. Gaza. Yeah. Right. It's incredible. Um, I just wanted to add on something because... Uh, people will be coming from all kind of different start points. Often, when I'm doing the class, I'll say just familiar for my, excuse me, just familiarize yourselves with the with the alphabet before you start, and and we can can assume that you have those notes. But I thought I'll just start adding in a little bit of a, a refresher as we go for things like vowels and consonants and things like this. Not to not to do a whole class on it, but just to say like that these uh, these nikudim nikud is Hebrew for dot. There's just dots and lines and symbols are just a way of giving us vowels because Hebrew doesn't really have vowels. So this is the kind of Masoretes added these in in the kind of Middle Ages. So this is a tsere, it makes an A sound. I always remember this is called a segol, which makes an S sound. It's like three little eggs in a nest. So it makes an S sound. This chirik is lonely. So I always imagine it going, <laughs> like I'm all on my own. Um, and then the next one here is patach. It makes an A sound. And this dot here, you can remember the colon makes an O sound because it's over. So it's O when it's over. And then you have this little, uh, this little comets here. It's a tricky one. It could be like an U, uh, or if you, you, can, you can use it the same as the patach. And when you see these two vertical dots, that means no vowel or almost no vowel. Like if it's impossible to do no vowel, you just do a little bump. But that's, that's for things like, you know, like the word steer. You go straight from the S into the, into the PH, right? Uh, oh, sorry. You're muted, Re repeat the word sorry. again because your microphone cut out. So what was Oh, sorry. So like the word sphere in, in English, we just slide straight from the S into the PH without right. making a thing. That's, this this uh, schwa is really good for that. So like right. you know, a kid learning to read might say Sophia, and you're like, no, that's a lady's name, like Sophia, Sophia. So this is really good for just sliding from one to the same. And let me time. point out, also go back to the O or O. Yeah, this this comments here. Right, no, the one next to it, the O H. Oh, the O when it's over. Yeah, right. yeah. So if you and if you have a vav and it shows on the side, it gives you a U sound, like a in the stomach punch or something like that. <laughs> right, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So in fact, actually, let's go and find that in that in that first because we have we have a few different vavs mm -hmm. in this verse. Yes. And a good rule for a vav is if there's a vowel underneath it, you do a v and then vowel. But and then vowel. But over here, this is the one you were talking about, isn't it? The right. gut punch one. Yeah. So if there's a dot over it and there's nothing underneath, you don't actually make the v sound. You That's just right. do the o, right? And if there's a dot underneath the hook, you do u and it's under and o and it's over. That's my that's my kind of very childish yeah. way of remembering. And and listen, to, to be honest, that was the hard part for me because I would get to that 
and I would have a hard time knowing O or U or also yeah. whether to pronounce the V part. Right. It there's, took me. It take you a while, but you'll get it. There's what. There's one more tricky one as well, which is like in this word, uh, your faith. Because the dot's directly above the vav, you just do O, like yo faith. Right? Yo faith, right. But if it's to the sides, you ca it can turn into a vo again. But that's rare. I'll, don't worry, I'll point it out when it comes but, up. But when, it, when, you say to the, when you say to the side, you're talking about the top side, not the middle side. Right, right, right. And when right. it's a top it's, side, it's like to it, the left yeah, up here. it can pronounce the vo. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that, that, that vav is a tricky is a tricky character. It's well, it's only kind of that it. they put that in the Hebrew to trick up us uh, dyslexic. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. But the nice thing is we're going to go through the pronunciation of everything. So right. as we go through the verses, you're going to see every version of everything. And you're, going to, you're not going to notice you're absorbing it. Like you'll just be like, oh, yeah, I've, I didn't know what that was, but I keep on hearing you make this noise. So that must be that. You know, so the other, other day I watched a quick TikTok and it was a little boy. And, you know, just a little above toddler, but taught speaking wise. And he's mm. speaking in Hebrew. So ah. I watch it and I start crying because my brain knew exactly what he was saying. But I, wow. you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like when your Hebrew is bad enough to where you can understand it, but you don't. I, I can't even explain it. It's like you, my brain knew it. But I was like, OK, did I just hear that right? Right. And, right. and he was going, I, I want my Abba. Where's my Abba? You know, and yeah. mama saying, you know, he'll be later. He'll be come here later. But my, my Abba, yeah. it's my Abba. And he's crying. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. Hebrew, the feels, doesn't it? But yeah. Hebrew does that too. It's like that with any language. The more you spend time with it, pretty soon yeah. you just start picking it up. Yeah. So. And, and it's a lot, but it is, you're right. It's a lovely feeling when something connects and you go, oh, oh yeah, I know this one. <laughs> and it's, it's like the first word, in fact, that that's going to happen for most people is this word here. The Yomer. The Yomer. Yeah, that's because this is probably the most common word in the whole, certainly in the book of Bereshis, but maybe in the whole, uh, in the whole of the Chomash, this word comes up more than anything else. Because okay. what you have is you have the, the root to speak, right? Amar is to speak. Yomer, without the vav, Yomer would be he will say, and the Yomer means he said. Like mm -hmm. it flips the tense into past tense. So he said happens a lot in the Bible, right? Absolutely. Because a lot of the time it's God speaking to someone, which, uh, you know, although God is, doesn't have a gender explicitly, this isn't just masculine, but it's also the neutral sense. We use that for God. And also there's a lot of patriarchs. There's a lot of uh, male prophets in the Bible. So they'll always have a yod because they're right. explicitly male, right? So if this is Vyoma Elohim, then we know that this is and God said. Now, obviously, we have the verb first, and then who's doing the verb. But that's the common way. It's not the only way, but it's, the, it's frequently the way in Hebrew that we put verb, and then who's doing the verb, and then more information next. So what did God say? Let's, let's have a look at what God's saying in this. Now, just to remind you, last time we left off on the Yehi Erev, and it was evening, the Yehi Voka, and it was morning, Yom Revi'i, which is day four. Could you move so, your microphone up just a little bit more? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just, just a little I'll, bit. I'll just take it in hand for a moment. Beautiful. Stop me bumping, bumping the table. So uh, we finished on Yom Revi'i day four, which means we're starting day five now, Yom Hamishi. So God said, Yom Elohim, Yishert Su. Now we've got a new actual, we've got, we've got a nice new function here. Mm -hmm. A minute ago, I told you that if you had Vyome without the Vav, it would be future tense because it hadn't been flipped into the past tense, right? Right. Well, this here has the yard to say it's a future masculine or neutral verb. This is the verb. This says he or it will do it, but there's no vav to flip it into the past tense. So this here is a future tense. Something is going to happen, right? And the yard is telling you he or it will do it. We've got another function here. This gut punch oo vav at the end, right? This is the vav with the oo on it, oo underneath the hook. U underneath the hook is a U. Underneath the hook. <laughs> so this is, has a pluralizing effect. So instead of being he or it will do it, it makes it they will do it. Is so this the case? A, in, is this the every case it's like this? There is there is one other case where you get a new vav at the end, and that's when, when there's a who construction. Who means he in Hebrew. Okay. So you can have a verb right. being done to him, and it can be... Uh, What's a good What's a good example? Uh, I don't want to say it, but the 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 yak lay who would be, and they eat him. <laughs> that's just the first. I, I'm always thinking about food. I'm always thinking about right. eating. So by putting who on the end, that also has a new vowel. 
then that would make it being done to him instead. Okay, yeah. But without the who, when it's just who, that means they they are doing the verb. So yeah, we need to know it. what this – the verb is sharets. And sharets means it's the verb to swarm. Okay. Right. So the cool thing about this is sometimes we get the function – um, in Hebrew, and we get the noun as well. So if the verb sheretz means to swarm, this is a sheretz, a swarm, right? So the verb and the noun, they're basically the same word, right? We can tell from the grammar, this is the verb, right? So this is the doing word, and this is the object. Right. So the so swarm swarms, right? And, and they're so close that you start to pick up words and you get every version of it. You learn the word sheritz. Oh, well, this one's got a yod. This must be two swarm. This one's just on its own and it has eh, eh. So it must be the object. So those patterns are going to suddenly start sparking and you start connecting as well. And just as well to remind you, in the sheritz, we have this segol, which is like three little eggs in a nest. That makes an eh sound just like egg. So this is sheritz. That's it, sadly. So for Yom Elohim, God said, Yishartsu, they will swarm Hamayim, right? Now, Hamayim, Mayim is water, and this is Hamayim. It's a little bit, you could interpret this one of two ways. You could say that the waters will swarm, as in they'll be full of a swarm, or something will swarm the waters. But actually, those two things mean the same thing. Like the waters themselves aren't going to be lots of waters coming together and wriggling, but something's going to swarm the waters, right? So, What's going to swarm the, the waters? Well, a sheritz, which is a swarm. So a swarm will swarm the waters. But it tells us a little bit more information. And these words, even someone who is not as confident with Hebrew might recognize these already. You might know the word nefesh. See, segol, segol, eh, eh, nefesh. So nefesh, most people know from the organization nefesh but nefesh, right? Which means soul. It means soul with soul. It means soul to soul. We say soul to soul in English. So a nefesh is a soul. What about chai? Well, most people know chai from l'chaim. So chai is life. So it's a nefesh chai, a living soul. But, combine it with the previous word, it's sheretz nefesh chai, a swarm of living souls. I mean, that's immediately enigmatic. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Yes. That's right. We're, we're kind of describing these things in very kind of interesting poetical ways. It doesn't just say, you know, fish or lobsters, or, you know, it says, you know, it comes a swarm of living souls. And it's really talking about these but, vast... But it's describing the nature of what he's getting ready to place within the sea. They swarm. That's, absolutely. They run in schools. Yeah. And, but, and, and they seem to have souls. They've got yes. living souls. That's, you know, they're not just these mindless automatons. There's, right. there's something, it's life that we're starting. It's very basic life. Right. Very simple life. And we work up in complexity from there. Correct. People who are very into evolution are like, yep, yeah, life started in the sea. We started off with, you know, fish and stuff. And then they started crawling up onto the land. You know, you're mm -hmm. like, it's here in the Torah. <laughs> you know, like, right. again, I always ask this question. How do... Bronze Age desert dwelling Hebrews know to start with plants and then fish. That's Correct. what we've done. Started with plants, then we went to fish. Right. So the Yom Elohim, God said, Yishar Tsuhamayim, the, the waters will swarm. Sheritz Nefesh Chaya, a swarm of living souls. And Vaof your faith. Now what's happening here? Oh, uh, I've gone too far. What was the what's second word? Your faith? Both your faith. Well, I'm going to show you something cool with this. So the ayin, lion here doesn't actually have a vowel on it. So there's no dots on this, but there's a vowel with a dot over it. And so to make this first noise, we're combining all three symbols. Often, if you want to know that an ayin is making an O sound, or even an aleph is making an O sound, it's often aleph and then vowel with a dot over it, or ayin and then vowel with a dot over it, and that makes an O sound. And this is a final fe. When the when the fe is in the beginning or the middle, the the, the tail is curled under, but when it gets to the end of the word, the tail drops down. So this is oaf. And that is a flying thing. People like to translate this as a bird, but it's not a bird. It's just a flying thing. We don't know what it is that's flying yet, right? And so the thing is named after what it does. And what does it do? It your faith, right? So this is again, you see there's two, there's two faces here. This is the fay in the middle where the tail's curled under. But when there's a fey at the end, the tail drops down. So you can see those two fey's right. next to each other, a middle and, a, and an end one. And again, we have iron with a vowel with a dot over. So this is O, 
faith. This is the tzere. Yeah, and so just a reminder, anytime you see the fey at the end, that's the way it's going to look like. It's always yeah. going to have that drop down. That's the face of feet. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, not although not every letter has a final form. Correct. Only, what, three or four letters? Yeah, I can't remember three, how many it is. I'll have two. to count up as we go through. Maybe it's but only two. Okay. All of them except one have this idea that the tail drops down. Two. So with every, if, if every other letter, like the tzadi, the tail drops down. The nun, it gets longer. The tail drops down. The kof, it's, it's like, the kof is like that, like a curly cur. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the word, it drops down and it's like that. So I'll point these out as we go, but the only one that doesn't do that is the mem. So you have a mem that's open in the middle of the beginning of the word, but at the end it closes. So this is the only one that doesn't have a tail that drops down. That's the exception. Right. The, the rest the only of them one, have a tail. Yeah, the only two that I talked about, the mem and mem sofit, mm. nun, nun sofit, and, and this one. Yeah, so nun, nun is kind of, uh, have we got a nun here on the page? There's a nun. Yeah, yeah there's a nun right there. But at the end, the tail will drop, drop down. Drop down straight. Yeah. This is a fey, but at the end, the tail will drop, drop down. down. Right. This is a tzaddy. Normally, its tail is tucked under it, but at right. the end, its tail drops down. So if you see a letter with a tail drop down, that's the end of a word. And that's what they're right. for, really. We, we don't have capital letters here. So a good way to read a lot of Hebrew letters and still be able to break up the words is if every now and again, there's a final letter. So you go, well, that's the end of the word. The next one right. must be the beginning of the next word. So it just makes it a little easier to read. Yeah. So off your face, off your faith is the flying things that fly. Mm -hmm. So again, everything is is labeled by what it does, by its function. And Al Haaretz, what we have here, this is a really good one to know. You know this from El Al. El Al is a is a very optimistic kind of name for a for an airline. Yeah. It just means up and over, you know, which which sounds like right. a nineteen fifty scout leader to me. Up and over, off we go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Al comes from the word Aliyah. You know, if someone makes right. Aliyah to Israel, they they're go going up. up, they're ascending. Or if you get called up to the Torah, you get an aliyah to, mm -hmm. the, to the Torah. So that's to go. So al means on. And ha'aretz, ha'aretz, just like ha'aretz Yisrael or ha, ha your country, Rod, has got a very proud name. America in Hebrew is called Aratzat Habrit, which means uh, aretz is the land. Aratzat is the lands, plural. Habrit is of the covenant. Think about that's that such a for a second. Beautiful, beautiful name for yeah. America, the lands of the covenant, because it's the United States. It's that's united good. by this covenant everyone's entered into to be one united people. So Israel has called it Arab Sahabrit, the land of the covenant. Beautiful name for America. Yes. Um, your faith, Al Haaretz, that fly on the earth. Al Panay. Rakia Hashemayim, and we encountered Rakia as the thinness, which is our way of describing the sky, and Hashemayim as the heavens. But and what's pan Al Panay? Yeah. Well, Al is on, and Panay, we start off with the word Panna. Now, this, this is your Panna. Right. You might have your grandmother come on and say, Azashena Panam, who's, oh, right. what a beautiful face, right? So your Panna is your face. But we have this function at the end where if you have a yod and a tseire, this is the tseire vowel, which makes an A sound and a yod at the end. If you have both of these, it doesn't work with just one, but if you have both of these, it means of. So instead of Panna face, it's Pane face of. Um, so. I'll always color it pink. Don't worry. Whenever we have a yod and a tzayre together, making that off function, I'll always make it pink so it stands out until we're, until we're really good at spotting it. So al panei rakia is on the face of the thinness hashemai in the heaven. So that's where the that's the of your faith are flying on the earth and on the face of the of the heavens and the in the sky. Good. So that's that's the beginning of 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 day five, and that's what that's what we're. But then we get a bunch of other really interesting stuff. A couple of them are quite weird. I'm just going to move this because this is a little bit big. It's covering over one of my words. Sorry about that. So we have Vayivra Elohim. Now, this is actually a really important word. It looks like the word, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong, here we go. This is where we are. It looks like the word Baruch, which I just changed to by mistake, but it's not Baruch, it's Vayivra. And the root here is Bara, Bet Resh Aleph, right? We actually know this from the first sentence of the whole Torah. Because the first instance is Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created, and bara is the word for to create, like to create from nothing. So with the Yod, it makes it he will create, and the Vav makes it he created. And of course, the next word here is Elohim. So God created et hataninim. And this is weird, right? Because in modern um, Hebrew, taninim are crocodiles. 
right? But that's not what it means here. We took the name for crocodiles from this word in the Torah. And this, 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 we weren't talking about crocodiles when the Torah said this. This is sea monsters, right? And, then, and when Jews went down to Egypt and saw crocodiles, they went, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the sea monster. That is a terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyone, anyone who's listening in from Florida knows these things are wrong. And <laughs> I, I, until, yeah, until you're Jonah and you're trying right. to get regurgitated on the shore. Yeah, yeah, now I don't even know what I was one. just doing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> weirdly, weirdly about that, there seems only to have been one of them. Right. It, like, like maybe when it says made, because uh, it, it was a it was a sp specific creature made for this purpose. That's the weird thing about that. Right, right. And maybe it was a species of, uh, 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 you know, maybe when it says an animal, maybe it means like, you know, the cheetah is an animal, but actually it's, you know, a lot of animals. Maybe it's like that. But it's possible that it was literally just one of these existed right. for the purpose yes. of, of, of gobbling up Yona. Yona, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, but wh whichever way it was, it's Taninim and it's Et hataninim hagadolim. When you dig into this root, it takes you on a weird little journey, which we don't have time for now, but it's worth doing. Try and find what is the three-letter word root of taninim. Hataninim hagadolim, the great big sea monsters. Vet. And we've had this function before. In the first sentence of the Torah, we have the et, which is the object marker. So that's what's being created. And when we have vet, that means there's another object that's being created. Oh, look, there's another vet here. So we can tell already et, et, et. There are three separate things being created in this in this uh, sentence, right? For Yivra Elohim, et etaninim hagadolim, the great big sea monsters, vet kol nefesh hachaya. Well, we encountered that before. Nefesh is soul and chai is living. So nefesh chaya is the living soul. But then we get another verb here, haromeset. And that can best be described as this. Romeset is the kind of scuttly, creepy things that make you, when you see them, you go, <laughs> um, yeah. so, so that's, that's the, that's the uh, maybe a little bit visceral, but it's the best way to describe no, that it's, act. It's true. The creeping things. Yeah, absolutely. The creepy things that give you the creeps. I think the creeps is named after the creeping things. I, I believe right. so. Yeah, you get the creeps from creeping things. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so these are, but they're still described as a nefesh chaya, a living soul. So these right. creepy things are still a living soul. It's kol, all, nefesh, uh, soul, chaya, that lives, haromeset, that crawls. Asher, that's my word that I get, that I geek out about because it's a boring word. It's that. Who cares about that? But it means whatever comes afterwards is more information about what then about what went before. So it's so it's the remesset, the things that crawl, that a share, shartsu hamayim. Now that's the word we got before in the first right. thing. We had Yishartsu Hamayim uh Sheritz Nefesh. So we're still talking about the same act. Right? right, we're still talking about the same process. It's just carrying on to the next verse. So it's called nefesh chaya haromeset that crawls asher shartzu hamayim that that swarms. You see how it's got an u, so it's they right. swarm hamayim. Um, so we weren't talking about fish in the beginning. We were talking about crawly, creepy things in the sea, which you know there's plenty of those if you go down yeah. to the bottom. And it says as well. Now this is interesting. We got this when we were talking about plants. Lamine hem. The first time we got it to lamino, and a vav at the end of the word with a little yamel on top of it means his. Lamino means his kinds. And then we got lamine who, and who means him. So it's another way of saying his kinds. But this is lamine hem, and hem means them, to their kind. Lamine right. hem, right? So their species or their, their category, or however you want to describe it. So we have who means he. And he means she and hem means them. Now, that's very annoying because we, we have a different meaning for he and we have a different. So it feels a lot. But, you know, we have to give it up to Hebrew because Hebrew was before English. So right. we, we've, we've misaligned this. But we, we hem, just should hem means just them. chuckle and move on. Yeah, right, right, right. It panics people because they go, how am I going to how am I going to remember it's the wrong way around? Listen, everything's the wrong way around. When you see it, you go, it's the wrong way around. Whatever I'm expecting, it's the other one. Right, right. <laughs> but we do, we're, we're going to see it enough that we get really comfortable with it. And I, I, I'll color them differently. So who, I'll put like a purple around the outside. Uh, who means he, so I'll put a purple around the outside. And when it's he, which means she, I'll put a pink around the outside and be you know, old-fashioned and sexist and give you sexist colors. That'll be good. Like, so, this is our third et. Va'et kol 
oh, this is the flying things, right? Right. Uh, and instead of being off your face, it's off kanaf. Now, kanaf is a corner. Like, for example, on the corner of my undergarment, I'm supposed to tie tzitzis. Right. right. On the corner, on the on the kanaf, even says in the Shema that I'm supposed to tie them on the kanaf of my big day, of my uh, of my garments. So, what's where's the corner on a flying thing? Say, for example, we had a duck in the room. If I had a duck right beside me now and I stretched it out, where would the corners be? It would be the wings on the tip. Right. The wings, yeah. That's the thing. Actually, so the, would, actually, that is the wings. It has flying right. instruments. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's weird, though, because if you think about it, if you, if you look at the shape of a, of a flattered out bird, there are corners. It's just weird that it flies by its corners. And the, and the, the Torah doesn't make a distinction between the two. It's just like, yeah, corners, that'll do. Um, so... It's kol of kanaf, which really means um, the flying things, the flying winged things, right? Lamine who? To his kind. Who here is? So let's change the colors. Because this is who, I'm going to grab this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it pink on the inside. And I'll make it purple on the outside. Just to make it pop. So you can see the words. So that who, um, which is normally hey, vav, aleph, that means him. And then we get this lovely phrase at the end, which I'm I'm a big fan of because it has my pirate verb in it. Now imagine yeah. your pirates, he's got an eye patch, but he's also got a telescope, so his his right. his sight has been improved. The Yar. The Yar, the yar Elohim Kitov. <laughs> right. So the Yar here, the root is actually longer than what you have in here. You, you know, we have a three-letter verb root to every word. Right. But this only has two, two. Resh Aleph. But it's missing a weak letter. Hey. Exactly. The root is resh aleph hey ro eh, which is to see. But in this case, we lost the hey because it's weak, and we have vayar, vayar, and the aleph isn't making a sound because it doesn't. What well, it doesn't have a, ver a, a, a vowel on it. Vayar Elohim, so we know who saw. Right. We get the phrase God saw kitov that it was tov good. that it was good. And do you remember what the spe the special extra information that you're getting from that is? That when it says good instead the yehi came means and it was so, but when when it says uh, it means it was good. Do you remember that, what that means to the, to the flow of creation that we're talking about in this particular case? Uh, you, yeah, I think I'm a little lost. Go ahead. No, so, sorry, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I think I'm speaking cryptically and weirdly, so I'll clarify. No, no, no. no go ahead. When it says, when it says kitov, that means it's the end of that process, and we're going to start a new process. Oh, yes, 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 of course. So through, we have these different flows of creation, different cr flows of creative activity, and when they're still going, it says ki, uh, v'yehi ken, and it was so. For, and for example, on with that light side. and darkness, there wasn't a distinction, and then at the end of when it's repeated, it's completed, it's kitov, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Sorry, I okay. need a little sign language. Yeah, no, I didn't give I didn't give you a I didn't give you a good run into that. I just kind of switched <laughs> switched subject matter right through the sentence. Sorry about that. Let's, uh, make sure we're on the same page. So just as we're passing, here are a load of different words to mean to make or to do. And the one we had in this sentence was the yivra, bara is to create. Here we have Livroa, it's still vet ration as an aleph, but it's got a couple of extra letters, but that's to, that's to create something. We have la sot is to make or do. That's the general dog's body word. So there's a bunch of different ones, but they give you little clues as to kind of the kind of work that's being done. Like live not, the, the root is bone, and bone is to build, right? So that's different from bara, which is to create. So there's lots of different ways to make something, but we can look at the root and get a little bit more information than just being something's being made or done. We get a sense of the kind of work that's being done. So in these cases, bara, they're being created kind of seemingly from nothing. And then God does something cool. This is still on the same day of creation. That process is finished. And after it's being finished, this cool thing happens here. So it says... We actually, we get a word in between. Normally we have the verb and then who's doing it. This is the verb. This is who's doing it. God's doing it. And we get this word in between. So there's a couple of cool functions. I say cool because I think grammar's cool. How geeky is that? The yivrach, the root is barach, which is to bless. You know, we say baruch ata Hashem, alokeinu right. meleke olam. So whenever we say baruch, we're saying bless. And this is uh, varech, right? But this is vai varech. So the odd means he will bless. The vav turns into a past tense, and he blessed. And, blessed. Right? Mm -hmm. and then we get this otam. And this is something we don't have in English. 
This is what I call a passive pronoun. So pronouns normally are like, instead of saying someone's name, you say a word that replaces their name. So for me, I would say I. My, you know, my name is Moshe, but my pronoun is I when I'm talking. Right. But, but, but if I was to talk about you, that's also a pronoun. You is a pronoun. Right. Right. But if you and I were talking about him, that's another pronoun. Correct. But in Hebrew, you know, Ani is I, Ata is you, At is you to a woman, Who is him, and He is she. All of those are if the person is actively doing something. Right. If the verb that comes afterwards, they're doing it. But what happens if you do something to me, and I'm being passive? Then instead of being Ani, I become Ot. So all of the passive pronouns, you start off with ot, and then you put an ending. So if I do something to you, I say ot ka. If I was to do something to, to a woman and say I'm doing it to you, I'd say ot And there's okay. all the different ones here. And the mem is nice and easy to spot because very often a mem ending feels plural. Right. It does. It does naturally. Yeah. Like hem. Like if this was active, the word would be hem. But if it's passive, it's otam. So hem is active pronoun when they're doing something, or tam is a passive pronoun when they're being done to. So God is blessing them. They're not doing right. anything. Right. He's doing, they're being done to. Does that make sense? Right. Beautiful. So right. that's yep. useful, Hebrew. Doesn't it's not useful in English because we know who's doing the verb from the order of the sentence. But in right. Hebrew, you can change the order. So you need to give us a clue who's being done and who's being done to. So the Yavarik Otam, God bless them. The Yavarik Otam Elohim. Elohim is who's doing it. And well, who are we talking about? Who's the them? Well, in the previous verse, it said it described all of these different animals being created. And then it said, Otam, and God bless them. Otam Elohim, God bless them. Lay more. Now, the first verb we had was Vyomer, and the root was Amar to say, mm -hmm. right? But in this verse, uh, sorry, here we are, second line. The lamed means two or four, and amar means to say. So le more means to say, to say. Vivarek o tamalohim, God bless them. To say, that is, whatever it is that he's saying next, next is right. the blessing, right? Right. So it says, pru urvu umilu et hamayim. This is cool, because you right now you think, I don't know this. But as soon as I give you a little bit of information, you're going to be like, ah, that's that yeah. thing. Okay. So do you remember I told you that U makes it plural, mm -hmm. right? So there's a U plural, U plural, and U plural, because God's talking to all of the stuff that he's created in the sea. Right. Pru is the same word as pre, as in eights pre ose pre, fruiting trees that make fruits. So mm -hmm. pre and pru, this is, this is the fruiting words. Okay. So he's telling them fruit. Be As in fruitful. Right, right exactly. Right. So Rav, we call our rabbis Rav, but it doesn't mean teacher. The word for teacher is more or mora. Mm -hmm. Male teacher is more, female teacher is more. But, but Ra sorry, phone just did something that's not supposed to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, all, me... so all that time in elementary school when I was called a moron, my teacher was actually meaning I was a teacher. Wow. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Wow. I finally <laughs> I feel better about myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Class for Shalom. No one would ever take you for that. Um, but the reason we call the rabbi rap right. is it's not doesn't mean, not that it means teacher, but it means great. So it's an honorific term. We're saying big. Great rabbi, teach me something. It's a lovely, it's a lovely way to re refer to someone that you respect, right? Yeah, and Raph. often someone who's a particular teacher or something that's honored and revered, even though he's not a rabbi, will be called a rav. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so rav means great or many. So uravu means to become many, or as we classically refer to it, multiply. Multiply. So pru uravu means be fruitful and multiply. And then this phrase, umilu et hamayim. And mila, mila here is to fill something up. So it's be fruitful and multiply and fill up the waters. Et hamayim, right? Right. So it, it goes on to say, biamin. In, bet as a prefix means in or with, uh, yam, 
Yom is day, but Yam is sea, and Yamim is seas in the sea. So fill up the waters in the seas. So, but the question is, what's the blessing? And this is what's cool. If I say, oh, mighty bearded one, your beard should grow for a thousand years. You think, thank you very much. Great. But if God says your beard will grow for a thousand years. That means. That's going to happen. I'm going to live for a thousand years. Right. You're no, going to live that's... for a thousand years. Your beard grow for a thousand years. It'll be a very snazzy beard. Already is very, it's very sexy at the moment. But God is speaking this into existence. When God said there will be light, there was light because God said there would be. The act of saying it makes it happen. So when God blesses these things and says, you will be fruitful, you will multiply, and you will fill up the seas, you know, fill up the waters in the seas, that's what happens. Right. And, and that, let's let's carry this to such a beautiful promising thing up all through the Tanakh. Yeah. Anytime you hear Hashem declare something, he's created Absolutely. that. He's not yeah. saying, I hope you can do this. I, I believe you can do it. I trust in you. No, he says, and you will do this. Right. Right. And, and, or, and, the, and I will redeem my people. It's like he just he's already redeemed them. You hear me? Moshe, he said it at the beginning in the tour when he says it doesn't mean he's going to do it he has done it we're we're so used to the existence of israel right now because it's been 75 years right so like i'm not quite 75 yet as long as i've been around there's been in israel so it's easy for me to forget how miraculous it is uh, but when you when you read through the prophets it says, you know, I'll bring you into the land of Israel and you're going to be living there and then you're going to make a mistake and you're going to have to leave, right. but then I'll bring you back. And it, and it says it thousands of years before we even entered the land. He was right. telling, talking about when he's going to bring us back into the land. And, right. and, you know, so anyone who's not religious looks at that and goes, yeah, well, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. but we knew this thousands of years before it even happened. Right. That's the amazing thing about this. And, and, and every- before... Every Jew knows that whenever they hear the, the mantra from the river to the sea, let Palestine be free, they know, yeah. It's Don't not worry about happen. it, man. Now, yeah, obviously, Hashem, Hashem yeah. has the decision, but he's the one that made the decision to return. Yeah, 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 yeah. He brought us back. To the land. That's the Chris. Never has there been a people displaced for so long mm-hmm. to return to a land and decolonize it. Right. Like that's the crazy thing is, is the Jews. They're decolonizers, not colonizers. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. If you if you look at the Middle East, now, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to start a fight here or anything, but you know, there are there are twenty seven countries that surround Israel that all speak Arabic. And right. and the, the language of Arabic came from Saudi Arabia. But the fact right. that everyone around speaks Arabic, that's a, that's an empire. In Arabic it's called a caliphate. Right. You know, you, you, you roll out and you say, Everyone's gonna join my religion, everyone's gonna speak my language, I'm gonna I'm gonna conquer this area. They did that. And then the Jews have reversed that. And they didn't do it by their own strength, because we've never been we've never been mistaken for a strong, powerful, numerous people. No. We're the we're the ones that everyone was looking down on. Tiny and quiet and weak and keeping to ourselves to ourselves, often ghettoized. So how is it that the Jews have become so powerful and so successful? If not by God. It's only right. God that can do it. And now people look at Israel and they go, it's most powerful. The most powerful collection of people in the Middle East. Right. Still the tiniest, but still crazy powerful, crazy successful. Why? Only by God. Only God can do something like this. Right. And so exactly as you said, God said you're going to come back. You're going to come back. Right. Who even That's worries it. about it? We're back. I, I would encourage, because this is a great time to stop. I would encourage mm. everyone who has been studying with us to take time when you're reading the, the Torah and you hear God make a statement, and you will do this, or and God said this. Mm. Just write them down and look at all the promising things that God has created in Torah. That you yeah. just think, oh, it's just a statement. No, if it's a Shem, not he's not just making a statement. Yeah, and all of this was written before these events. Absolutely. So if you see something in the prophets and you go, did that happen in history? If it did, you're looking at a miracle because we got we got we got promised right. this beforehand. Two more words of this, uh, yes. three more words of this, because we, so Vavarech uh, Otam, and he blessed them, Elohim God did, lay more to say, Pru urvu umilu et hamayim, be fruitful and multiply and fill up the waters, be a meme in the seas, and then it says, Vaha'of, and the flying things, Yerev Ba'aretz, 
And Rav here is the same word as the Rav in uh, Urvu. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the multiplying. And Yirav means he will uh, increase. He will multiply Ba'aretz in the land. Um, and this is how we finish each day of creation. So I think it's worth just finishing on this one. Yes. Uh, Yehi means it will be. Vayehi means it was. Vayehi Erev, and it was evening. Vayehi Voka, and it was morning. Yom Chamishi, day five, which day means five. when we come back for our next lesson, we'll be dealing with Yom Shishi, day six. Yom Shishi. And because yeah. that's the last day of creation, that's when we get right. people. And I'm super right. excited about that. This is going to be a great conversation. It's going to be amazing. Let's switch back to our faces here so we can close yes. out the, the text. Even though we forgot to do it during class, I'll 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 forgive you. I'll, I'll find a way to give you a signal to do that in the future. I have yeah. no controls over here, so it's not like I have a board to switch. Sorry, yeah, that's that, yeah, that's right. Hey, and folks, exactly. basically, basically, thank you for being patient with us because uh, we're we're not Joe Rogan and God knows who <laughs> else. It's just two two schmoes out here trying to teach something that we've learned and be patient with us while we make noise and look goofy and don't do things right but we really do appreciate uh studying the torah and and just a reminder to everyone uh if you really want to help israel obviously you can donate and give there are great causes to give but study study torah elevate right. yourself study torah elevate yourself we can do this we can change the world around us and i do believe that we're doing that there are miracles happening right now in the nation of israel during combat I'm, I'm taking a list of them. So every time I hear a new miracle and where I heard it from, I write it down. And it's, it's amazing what's happening. It's obvious that Hashem is fighting on behalf of the people of Israel. So um, no, anything um, that you no. want to say in closing? Um, we're just starting to get good news and people people are being rescued. Yes. And at the, at the moment of recording, this this video is going to go out later. So Bezra Hashem, by the time it goes out, many, many more will be rescued. Baruch but Hashem. but, but yes. praying for those, for especially those those children. Well, Please Moshe, I will be in touch with you, and we're going to say shalom to everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Shalom, shalom. Thank you guys. for your time, guys. Yes. Uh, pause.